Hey everyone, it's George Kroos with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am pumped to have my friend Jam Gamble. Interestingly enough, uh, this might be a little bit of a shorter podcast because I actually have a meeting right after and we had planned for um, a two hour time slot so Jam and I could catch up, talk about some things and we totally <laughs> forgot about this meeting and so this might be a little bit shorter but every but time I talk to Jam, I just have an amazing time and um, I'm going to let Jam tell a little bit about herself and, and who she is and what she does, but just, just kind of to let you know how I met uh, Jam years ago, I was speaking at an event and I, her and I just connected and became besties within about two minutes. Because I think I we're so tall. Maybe that's why. And we actually have never seen each other face to face since that. I don't know if you know that. Not once. And now we, but we've just connect, we've just had a really good friendship. We connect, you know, uh, off and on, just talking about work, talking about education. And every time I talk to Jam, and you're gonna feel this right away, I am just pumped. She just makes you feel like the the best person in the world. She just gives you energy. So Jam, welcome, and thanks for being hey. here today. Oh, shucks. You know, I think that, right? Like we just, I know. And you know what? We were originally trying to like meet up at some point, but with everything going on, yeah, I'll see you in 2022. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a couple of years from now. A couple of years from now. Hey, is Jam, can you tell everyone like, what do you do? And yeah. I know you have, I know you have multiple hats. So mm -hmm. what, what are the things that you do? Uh, so my main hat is um, I am the founder and lead Mike Slayer of the Slay the Mike program. I'm a speaker turned speaker coach. And basically my program helps people turn their voice into their ultimate superpower. So if you're someone who has any reservations or doubts or fears, or you just want to work on amplifying your voice, um, that's where I come in. And I've been running my program for four years. And as an educator um, for the past 10 years, it only made sense to take my program and launch it into a junior version for students. So it's been a really exciting uh, couple of months. So, in a but, but you like right now, you actually, you also work in education. You work, uh, you, you work. Yeah. Uh, every well, day you said, you said we got 25 minutes and my intro takes about 25 minutes. So yeah, I, I, I am an educator. My background <laughs> is primarily in special education. Um, and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a speaker and I'm a speaker coach and I'm a mom to three pets. What more do you want? <laughs> so tell, tell me, tell me the, the intersection between your your everyday work with kids and yeah. the work with the Slay the Mike Jr. Like, what? How do you see those connecting with one another in the work that you do to really empower kids every single day? It's a good question. Uh, growing up, I was the kid who got into a lot of trouble for talking. Um, my voice wasn't appreciated. I didn't realize the power of my voice. My mom was kind of forced to believe that my excessive talking was a problem. And I get it. There's a time and a place to talk and all that jazz. Um, but as I grew up and landed into media, so having a TV show for, for three or four years, I started to realize the power of my voice. And while still being in media, I was still teaching. And now I'm seeing as an educator and an entrepreneur and a speaker that we have so many budding, like, speakers in our classrooms that we're not doing enough to build and amplify those voices. We're focusing on excellence and eloquence. We are making sure that they're able to present an oral presentation at a level four, but in terms of encouraging our students to own their voice, appreciate their voice, be comfortable enough to not only share their big idea and their project, but to talk about their feelings and you know what life is for them, we're not doing that enough. So Slay the My Junior aims to help students feel comfortable with their voice beyond the classroom. So just in general, loving the sound of their voice, saying what they want to say, um, it helps to build that confidence. So I think, I think one of the, the things I've seen in education, and you can call me out if I'm wrong here, that as educators, we'll go and we'll maybe like have a PD day and we'll listen to someone and they'll have like a slide up and it's bullet points and they're kind of reading it and we're all thinking like, kill me. This is the worst thing ever. Like, <laughs> why would we like, why are you putting us through this right now? Right. And then, and then this is the interesting fact. Then we actually get kids to do very similar presentations in classrooms. Like I've actually seen that before and thinking, okay, so are we just doing this to like punish the next generation? Like, is that what we're trying to do here? Or are we actually trying to get 
kids to be authentic, right? Like I'm not saying don't like a lot of times I, I wrote this blog post a few years ago about PowerPoint doesn't suck. We, how we teach it sucks and like yes. how we get people to utilize these things like that. The PowerPoint doesn't say you must read slides, right? Like it actually mm -hmm. is built for something totally different. Mm -hmm. And so how do, how do you, cause I think to me, one of the things that I'm really big on is like being your authentic self. Like people, right. I, I don't like the, um, the over the top. I feel it's a show. I want the actual person. Do you know? What I, like you know, I want to know who, yeah. who I'm listening to, and so like, yeah. how do you how do you build that in? Like, how do you work with that? Well, well, first off, there are some people who are naturally over the top. Totally, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right? Yeah, there are some people who are very expressive, very animated, and that's them coming out. And then there are some speakers who we see and we're like, okay, you're just putting on this show, right? But when we're talking about the classroom, if we were to look at the rubrics, let's bring it back to my not so BFF, the rubric, nowhere in the criteria does it highlight students showing their, you know, unique personalities or their character or their style. Like that's not incorporated. Right. It's all like, you know, you, your, your slides should ha be font size 12. Um, there should be a visual. It should be this. It's nowhere where we're encouraging students to bring that magic that is them to their presentation. So if they were encouraged to do that, if they were encouraged to go outside the box, to, the box to go beyond the rubric, to maybe get a little animated, and we're starting to see it a little bit. You know, some kids are incorporating like their favorite video games or Prezi or whatever kind of styles. Mm -hmm. If we were to really be like fostering that more and really like breeding that type of mindset, then we're going to see it coming out in their slideshows. We're going to see it that they're going to put on this kind of like cool project that we've never seen before because it's a representation of them versus a uh, expectation of what's on the rubric. Make sense? Yeah, totally. And I think the, like, just even saying the word Prezi, like I feel a little seasick just thinking about that because that was yeah. when Prezi first came out, a bunch of people were like really excited about it because mm -hmm. now it wasn't like flash again. It was doing like cool animations, which like was not the focus of, what a presentation should be it, you know it's, yes. it's more on, on the person projecting as opposed to the slides or the visual yeah so yeah, so here, but... here's a here's a question for you then jam when you're talking about this not every person and rightfully so because every person is unique and different wants mm -hmm. to get up and you know speak or like wants to be a speaker and i know you've done a lot of work on this how do we empower the voice of those who don't necessarily want to get up in front of people or, you know, do it, do some of the work that you and I do. And Cause I think, mm -hmm. I think I know, like, I know that a lot of times the people that you work with have no interest in becoming a speaker. Yeah. So you're trying to empower them to use their, you're still empowering them to use their voice. Yeah. Um, so when I think about adults, um, those adults were once children who had unresolved issues. Um, when it came around communicating mm -hmm. that we're now unpacking as adults. So when I'm working with students, I think we have two types of students that we focus on when it comes to presentations. It's either the outgoing student who's always going to go for the oral presentation, who's the, the loud one, the energetic one. And then when we see the shy student, we automatically think that the shy student is someone we need to fix. When sometimes for those shy students, they're still developing their voice. It may not be in our time zone and in our guy, you know, timeline that we're like, oh, you need to be finding your voice right now, this week, because there's an oral presentation versus, you know what, this student needs to build and develop their voice. So with the shy students, it's a matter of making those children realize that their ideas are powerful and we want to hear them. Because for a lot of them that I've worked with, they don't think that people want to hear what they have to say because it's not as loud and expressive and as dynamic as their you know, counterpart, but they think that, oh, nobody wants to hear this. So when we're working on that mindset and that attitude that actually we do want to hear what you have to say, even if it's quiet, even if it's not as pow, pow, pow as other people, we still want to hear when we start to build on that confidence, mm -hmm. then they're going to want to share a little bit more. It's, it's a journey. It's not going to happen like that. So the adults that I work with, you know, my language It's who's your Kanye, who is your Kanye? Why is your Kanye holding your voice back? And when we figure out who or what their Kanye is, then we're breaking down those walls and those barriers that's preventing their voice from coming out. Well, this is perfect segue because I was actually going to ask you, but the, like you were building this up. That's one of Jam and I were talking about this and she shared this who's your Kanye concept, which I absolutely love. Can you 
kind of unpack that because I think it's really, really powerful. And I think a lot of people deal with, you know, Kanye's in their life. I was looking I was looking for my my prop. I don't have it nearby, but basically here we go. So if you remember that super iconic moment in pop history when Taylor Swift was receiving yet another award, okay? She was talking, she was owning the stage, she was owning her voice. Homeboy Kanye, oh my gosh, here it is, the proper one. Homeboy Kanye came up, I have mic changes. Homeboy Kanye came up and said, yo, Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had the best album of all time. We all have a Kanye in our life. We all have someone or a situation that has interjected, that has showed itself and said, you're not gonna talk right now. That idea is not gonna be shared right now. Nobody cares what you have to say. And we've held on to that Kanye. We've allowed that Kanye to share the stage with us. And therefore we are holding ourselves back from all the opportunities that we are allowed to have. So when we discover who your Kanye is, you are essentially reclaiming your time and taking back the microphone and saying what you meant to say years ago in a nutshell. So you said something, you and I were having a conversation about this, and you said something really powerful too, that sometimes your Kanye is you. Oh, yes. Right? So yes, do you, yes. want to talk, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, some people like to call it your, your imposter syndrome. Yep. Um, I just like to call it our inner Kanye. And essentially our inner Kanye is, again, the Kanye who we've created right? We, we have an idea, we have a story we want to tell, and we compare ourselves to other people. Um, we compare our ideas to other people, we compare our story to other people, and we tell ourselves that it's not worthy of being shared or being heard. And we continue to feed this Kanye, and we allow that Kanye to share the stage with us, versus telling the Kanye to actually see itself outside the room um, and reclaiming that, that space that we are entitled to. So for a lot of the people I work with, they have all these self-limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not articulate enough. I don't have a big enough audience. I'm not popular on Twitter like all these other people are. Mm -hmm. I don't have a huge following. And therefore, because I don't have all these things, I cannot be who I really see myself becoming. And when we check ourselves, which I have to do, Every now and again, I check myself because I hear my Kanye being really loud. Um, then I'm like, okay, no, this is my stage. This is my time. I look at my invoice and I go, does my invoice have Jam and Kanye on it or just me? No, it's just my name. And <laughs> when I realize <laughs> that it's only meant for me, that's how I'm able to dismiss my Kanye. But we all have that thing that we're holding on to that we psych ourselves out before we even begin. And I think, like, I, I just love that because I know sometimes sometimes the, like someone else can actually create that in you. Mm -hmm. And then that person has no interest in anything that you do. They don't care. They're not in yep. your life, but then they, but then you create it yourself. Right. Yeah. And then it holds you back and, and connects you. And I think that happens. Like I, I know it happens to kids, but I also think it happens to adults, right? Like, you know, of course. For, me, for me, I think when I'm thinking about that concept, I think about, sometimes like who am I holding back like I always think like who am I the Kanye to right who am I the person that is you know maybe taking someone like Joe Sanfilippo is a good friend of mine I'm pretty sure he said this that when people bring you an idea you want them walking away more excited about the idea than when they walked in and can I be that for people and so is there like any tips for like me not to be that and I like uh, me, you know, proverbially like uh, anyone to not yeah. be that for others. I think, and that's, that's really good of you to even ask that question. Like, am I being a Kanye to somebody else? I think, um, and I'm, I'm, and I'm guilty with this with my mom, for example, my mom <laughs> might come to, I can say, cause I know she's not going to listen to this. So it's all good. <laughs> I'm going um, to send it right to your mom. Don't you dare. <laughs> um, so my mom, if she was here would say, right. well, tell your friend, George, the amount of times I've told you something. And then you instantly give me feedback and you create, or you go, well, is this going to work? And I start questioning versus asking questions. That's maybe going to excite her about her idea and go, Oh yeah. I never thought about this. I right. started asking her questions like, are you sure? But what about this? <laughs> And then, and then that just, you know, crushes her whole, her, her dreams. And I become right. that child. Right. So are you being someone that when someone comes to you, whether it's a student or a colleague is coming to you with an idea and instead of saying, okay, so where do you see this going versus, are you sure this is going to work? Mm -hmm. 
like what kind of questions are you asking? And are you asking those kind of questions that are really like raining down on their parade? So one, don't ask questions immediately. Listen, show that you're excited. Like ask them questions about how they're feeling about it, how they got up, you know, reached this point versus where are you going to go with this? Because when you start talking futuristically, it almost makes that person start potentially doubting themselves. Like, okay, well, I don't have all the answers right now. I just, I just noticed what I want to do. <laughs> and I want to be in that moment versus you trying to think three, four, five years down the mm -hmm. line what I should be doing with it. So don't do that. Don't be that person. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that for me, especially in the field of education, mm -hmm. it's frustrating when I see people trying to bring people down as opposed to elevating, right? Like mm -hmm. our, our whole work, everything that we do is about elevating others. Like that is the premise. And when we do that, sometimes it's out of jealousy. Sometimes it's maybe not just understanding, whatever. I think, you know, that's something that I struggle with. Now, the idea of elevating, I think, really ties into the, the next thing I want to talk about with you. Uh, you're actually doing a Slay the Mic Junior Challenge, and you're you're. I think I think you're doing it right now. I I saw something that you're doing currently. I did. I did a twist. I did a yeah. twist. So tell us. Yeah. Tell us about the Slay the Mic Junior Challenge, and like, how yeah. can, like what is it? How can I get mm. access to it? Like, what do we yeah. do? So it's it's a two part. The first part is on Instagram. So I am known to do a lot of lives and videos and all that jazz. And with the current situation where children are at home and their parents are at home with them as well, um, parents are desperately looking for content um, and, and, and meaningful content for their children. So I decided to take the Slay the Mic Junior Challenge, but instead of making it just student focused, make it family focused. So the conversations I've been having on Instagram are act activities that parents and their child uh, could do together to build their confidence and amplify their voice. So we did it last week. We were talking about um, one of the activities we did were list five words to describe your voice. So the children had to do that and the parents had to do that. And then they took turns um, describing how each other's voice made them feel. And the feedback I got from that were parents were like, I've never asked my child, how does my voice make you feel? And I've never, you know, told my child how their voice makes me feel. So it actually was a great bonding opportunity. So what I'm going to be doing in the upcoming weeks is that every Monday, I'm going to be going live on Instagram and doing the Slay the Mic family edition. Um, so we're going to go live for about 30 minutes and have a Q&A for kids at the end. Uh, not for the parents, but for the kids to ask me questions. Oh, and in that. addition... Yeah, because one That's of the questions awesome, like, yeah. yeah, one of the kids asked me were like, how do you, how do you, um, how do I get, oh no, what did I say? I, how do I feel less scared doing presentations at school? And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's answer that. So in addition to that, um, because I'm a speaker and I go to schools and I do all my signature keynotes, I have a whole dock of like Google slides that are just sitting collecting digital dust. Right. So I'm going to be taking all those Google slides and turning them into free webinars for students. So I'm going to be presenting them on Zoom. And if your children are between the ages of like 10 to 14, they could watch my, my keynotes and I could interact with them. I'm actually looking up. I, I just love that because there was, I cannot remember what country that did this, but basically all these kids they had like i think the president or prime minister i cannot remember the country oh yes they got was it the one who had a whole press conference for the kids to just ask for questions? kids right and i yeah. think you know the when we're doing some of this content and actually engaging kids to ask questions and to learn from that i i just love that you're you're creating that with families too right because i think as a parent if i'm listening to what I might be surprised if some of my kids' questions are, but just allowing them to have that voice, like encouraging yeah. them to have that voice can be really powerful. Yeah. And I think this is, I've been asking everyone that I've been having on the podcast the same question and ties into what you're talking about. There's so much uncertainty. There's so many things going on in the world. What mm -hmm. would you say is like your best advice to educators right now? Um, one, don't, don't uh, fall for... I call it Corona peer pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the same way that everyone was rushing to, to Costco to get toilet paper, don't feel that you have to rush online and create something. Okay. We're seeing everyone now is offering this and teacher follow teacher that don't feel that you have to be a superhero 
And just because you're an educator that you have to be producing something for everybody right now. Um, you are human before you are an educator. Um, you are going to be going through your own emotions about what we're all dealing with right now. So be kind to yourself. And I know that sounds so like cliche. I actually hate saying it, but really be kind to yourself um, and show up when you feel comfortable enough showing up. Um, and if you really are an educator who loves what you do, it will come to you. You will find a way to continue to educate the masses. You will find a way to continue to inspire and to educate and to motivate. It will come to you. Just don't force it. Take yeah, I, I saw, I saw, like I shared a tweet actually probably about it two hours ago and it was a teacher making a TikTok, and it was admin is saying something like admin emailing me trying to get a hold of parents that. trying to yeah. connect with kids yeah. and it's almost like we're, we're we're like of course i like i i never question the intent i know people are trying to help i know um so i, I actually had a teacher email me this morning you know say, basically saying like our, our administrators are making do all these things like things that we're we've never done before and then plus we got to do this and plus we got to do this plus we got to do this and people need to just slow down. Like people need to just chill out a bit and mm -hmm. like make sure that you're connecting with your kids do that. But you don't focus less on one of the nice things that's happening right now. And no, and I've been saying this over and over again, we, a bunch of standardized tests have been canceled all over the world and nobody cares. Like nobody's like, Oh, but how will we know? Right. No one's worried about that. They're more worried about how the kids are. Yeah. So I just, I love that advice. Cause I think, we just need to just chill, like just pull yeah. back and relax a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, of course we want, you know, obviously like it's nice, like it was nice to sit and talk to you for an hour and a half and just talk about whatever before. Yeah. And I think that just having conversations with people is like hugely powerful right now. And, and, not and to, to add like a lot of the content that I'm seeing about families right now on Twitter and Instagram is like parents going crazy that they have their kids at home. And I'm like, this is a really good opportunity for you to reconnect with your child. Yep. Because if you do, the, if you do the math, teachers are on average with your child, like 40 to 50 hours a week, more than you are. So yeah, you have them for a, an extended period of time. But this is a great opportunity to emotionally connect with your child, mm -hmm. to have those conversations that you don't usually have time for or you're rushing to do in the morning or in the car ride, but really sit down and communicate. And with Slay the Mic, that's what we're aiming to do right now is to reconnect parents and their children through the beauty of communicating. So I'm, I'm hoping um, that this is something that parents uh, appreciate and they benefit from. Like mm -hmm. one child said to me on Monday, I, I think that you're a really cool coach and I love that you look like me. And I was like, oh, I, I'll, I'll ugly cry was already starting because I was like, wow, you know what I mean? Like to hear a six-year-old tell me that, like children yeah. are fantastic communicators. I think we just need to listen a little bit more. Yeah. And I, I love that. And I, I, I know that you've empowered a ton of educators, people outside education, kids. I love talking to you. I honestly, I think I avoid you because I know it's going to be like three hours out of my day right away because we just talk forever. And I just, I, I, I'll tell you, um, I hope everyone that's listening will connect with Jam. Uh, where where can we find you? You can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at I am Jam Gamble. Um, and yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll make talk. sure that I put uh, links to both uh, Jam's Twitter and Instagram in the mm -hmm. description um, on the podcast as well as on cool. YouTube. But Jam, thank you so much. Thank you. It was just a blast awesome to talk talking to. to you for like yeah. so many hours. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope, thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, make sure you connect with Jam. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for, for chatting. Take care.